I'm clear Scottish Wildlife Trust's Falkirk Ranger based here at Jupiter Urban Wildlife Centre. In this video we're going to be taking a closer look at butterflies and moths. Butterflies are from the order Lepidoptera, which comes from the ancient Greek words for scale and wing. The tiny scales covering a butterfly's wings are one of the main identifying features. These scales can be a variety of different colours, giving butterflies a spectacular range of colourful patterns and butterflies are highly regarded for their beauty throughout the world. There are over 18,000 species of butterfly in the world, including around 56 species which live and breed in the UK. Let's take a closer look at a few common butterfly species that you might spot in your local green space, in your garden or here at Jupiter. A common butterfly widespread throughout the UK, the orange tip may be one of the first butterfly species you see each year. The first adults emerge in April and can be found in a variety of habitats, including gardens. The males have the distinctive orange tips to their wings, which makes them easy to identify, but the females can be a little trickier. The black wing tips could lead to confusion with other white butterflies, such as the small and large whites and the green veined white. However, if you catch a glimpse of the underside of the wings, this can help you identify the species as they have this beautiful green lichen splotch pattern. The ringlet is quite an inconspicuous butterfly compared to most of our other native species. Their dark brown wings may seem a bit drab, but a closer look reveals the white fringe around the wing edges and the beautiful little bullseye markings. Ringlets have increased their range in Scotland in recent years and can be seen in damp grassland areas, sometimes in quite large numbers. Now is a good time to spot ringlets, which are on the wing from June to August. Possibly our most recognisable butterfly, the peacock is as brightly coloured and beautiful as the bird it is named after. Their most eye-catching feature is the bright eye spots on the wings, which can startle or confuse predators. In contrast, their undersides are very inconspicuous. When their wings are closed, they resemble a dead leaf, which is another great feature that helps them avoid predators. Peacocks emerge from hibernation in March or April, depending on how favourable the weather is, and after breeding, the new generation emerges in late summer, meaning this is a species that can potentially be seen at any time of year. Painted ladies are a migrant species of butterfly, arriving in the UK in summer, after an intergenerational migration from Africa. Numbers vary from year to year. 2019 was a particularly good year for painted ladies and their arrival in the UK in huge numbers was reported widely by the media. Unlike butterflies, moths are not always highly regarded, but there is actually no clear difference between moths and butterflies. Moths are also in the order Lepidoptera. Most moths are nocturnal, while butterflies are active during the day, but plenty of moths are also day-flying. Many moths are brown, while butterflies are often brightly coloured, but there are also many colourful and beautifully patterned species of moths. One distinguishing feature to look for is that almost all butterflies have clubbed antennae, whereas most moths have either thin or feathery antennae, but there are exceptions to these rules too. Moths are much more diverse than butterflies. There are around 160,000 species in the world, including 2,500 in the UK. A major cause for concern among people who dislike moths is that they feed on clothes and carpets. But of the 2,500 species we have here, only a couple have larvae which do this. Moths are an incredibly important part of our ecosystem. Some adult moths lack mouth parts, but many feed on nectar just like butterflies, and so they are important pollinators. Moths are also a vital food source for many other creatures. Bats feed on night flying moths, and moth caterpillars are a very important food source for birds, particularly to feed the chicks in the nest. Blue tits, a favourite garden bird common throughout the UK, typically have broods of 8 to 12 eggs. Once hatched, the chicks need to be fed around 100 moth caterpillars a day to survive. That amounts to billions of moth caterpillars each year, just to feed and raise the chicks of the UK's blue tits. 
of the 2,500 species of moths in the UK, there are around 800 known as macro moths. These are generally larger than the other group, which are known as micro moths. I'll be focusing on the larger macro moths in this video, but do check out my colleague Kate's fantastic video about micro moths on the Scottish Wildlife Trust YouTube channel. Let's take a closer look at a few common moth species. Common throughout the UK, the elephant hawk moth is a spectacular species. The adults are eye-catchingly coloured in bright pink and lime green, but as they fly at night, they're not often seen. You might be more likely to spot the caterpillars, which are large and have distinctive eye spot markings on the head to scare off predators. Elephant hawk moths can be found in a variety of habitats, from the countryside to urban gardens. The favourite plant for females to lay their eggs on is rosebe willow herb. Here's a moth that might make you do a double take. A master of camouflage, the adult buff tip moth looks incredibly like a small piece of broken birch twig. The buff tip is a common moth of woodlands where the caterpillars feed on the leaves of deciduous trees. While moths are thought of as creatures of the night, there are several species that fly during the day. One of the most striking examples is the six spot burnet. They can be found in grasslands and coastal areas where the adults can often be found feeding on knapweed and thistle flowers. Their bright coloration is a clue to predators that they are unpalatable. When under threat, they can release hydrogen cyanide. So we're going to set the moth trap up here in Jupiter tonight and see what species we can find living in this meadow area. This is called a Robinson trap and like all moth traps, it's basically just a very bright light over a container and there's a funneled entrance that the moths will fall into once they're attracted to the light. Inside we have lots of egg boxes and these basically just give lots of little nooks and crannies for the moths to hide in once they fall into the trap. So we'll set this up and then we'll come back early tomorrow morning and see what species we've found. So it's morning now and we're back in the meadow to check what species have been attracted to the moth trap. I've got some bug pots at the ready, identification books and pen and paper so that I can jot down the names of all the species that we find. It's always a good idea to have a look around the trap on the ground, the walls and the side of the trap to see if any species have landed on the outside as well. This is a really nice example that I've already potted up. So this is a peppered moth and it's a species that a lot of people will remember being mentioned in high school biology classes. The peppered moth has two colour forms. This is the light form and there's also a dark form where the wings are completely dark with no light patches. In industrial times when air quality was really poor and the air was filled with soot and smog, only the dark form was found in cities. And the theory behind that is that with the air quality so low, no lichen could grow on the trees. And so the dark form was the only form that could successfully camouflage against the bark of trees. The light form was only found in the countryside where air quality was a lot better and there was lichen on trees. This isn't such an issue now because air quality is a lot higher than it was back in early industrial times. So let's dive into the trap and see what else we've found. So here is a fantastic moth. So this is a poplar hawk moth. It's one of the biggest moths that we find here in Jupiter. And it's just fantastic. So I'll put my finger beside it so you can see just how big this moth is. It's got a really large body and really interestingly shaped wings. And if you look at the front of the moth, you can see it's got big feathery antennae. And those will help the male to find a female to mate with 
by sensing her pheromones. So we've got a couple of different species on this egg box. This one here is called a burnished brass and if we move the box slightly then you'll see how the wings catch the light and it's this beautiful iridescent green colour. We've also got a nice clouded border here. Now this is a really common moth to find in moth traps and although it is a night flying or dusk flying moth it's one that you could see during the day as well if you're walking through vegetation it's quite easily disturbed and on the underside we've got something really fantastic so this is a garden tiger such a stunning moth it's got this beautiful pattern on the upper wing and you can just see glimpses of its body and the underwing, which are a bright, bright red. What a beautiful creature. Why not try some moth trapping in your own garden using these activity sheets, which you can find in the learning zone on the Scottish Wildlife Trust website. Butterflies and moths are important pollinators, as well as food sources for many other creatures but they are also useful environmental indicators. By recording butterflies and moths, we can understand how their populations are changing due to habitat loss, changes in agricultural practices, and other human-caused factors. We can also clearly see the distribution of some species changing over recent decades due to climate change. This information can also help build a picture of how our environment is varying as a whole. Many of our butterfly and moth species are in decline, but luckily there are some really simple ways to help them. You could join over 100,000 people to take part in the annual Big Butterfly Count from the 17th of July to the 9th of August. Counting the butterflies in your garden or local green space will help to build up a picture of how butterflies are fading throughout the UK. You can also help butterflies and moths in your own garden by planting native wildflowers, not using pesticides, and avoiding peat compost. Even a window box filled with butterfly friendly flowers could be of huge benefit. You could also leave a messy patch in your garden which will be great for lots of insects. A small patch of common nettles could become host to the caterpillars of several species including small tortoiseshell, peacock and red admiral. I really hope you've enjoyed taking a closer look at butterflies and moths I hope you'll agree that they really are fascinating and beautiful creatures.